So everyone, really excited to have Joan Graves here today. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, content. We're going to be talking about what she does at the MPAA. And we're going to be talking about technology. And Joan, we're here at Studio Now. This is our nerve center where our technology and our team and our creative network come together. It's, people are still working and um, we want to have an interactive conversation mm -hmm. and get to know you and hopefully learn a little bit uh, about what you do on a daily basis. Happy to be here. Who is, works with you on, on the ratings board? Parents. They're all parents. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we hire them, they, they have children between the ages of 5 and 15. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a permanent job because you do get desensitized a little bit to the material. Sure. And your children grow up, and we want people there who are actively making decisions for their own children so they know about the process. Uh, we try to hire them from all over the country so they're, they have different backgrounds and exposed to small towns, big cities, mm -hmm. different regions of the country. So how does it work? So a, a film is rated, is everyone that, that works with you, are, they, are you all in one central location screening yes. together? When they're on the board, they live in Los Angeles. Um, we screen the film together. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the film is over, everyone votes without talking to each other. And that's important because some raters are naturally more artistic and more uh, persuasive than mm -hmm. others. And this way you get everybody's gut reaction off the bat. A senior rater announces what the vote is and then there's a, a discussion um, out of which comes the rating and the descriptor. What's so interesting in the discussion though, is you can get the idea from each rater as they talk about it how strongly they felt about their rating and which scenes in the film or what elements in the film mm -hmm. led them to rate it the way they did. So when the senior rater then transmits that if the submitter said, well, that's fine, but we don't want that rating. We want to edit it to get another rating. Mm -hmm. It is that discussion that the senior rater is more or less able to talk about to lead them, to help them a little. Uh, we're not professionals. We're just parents, so we're not editors. By listening to the feelings of the parents, they can tell the submitter, you know, it's the one scene where the blood splats against the wall, or it's the <laughs> accumulation of rat-a-tat-tat all through the whole film. And, uh, you've got a general feeling of it. How does the public find out what the ratings are um, on a film? Well, uh, we luckily now have a website, filmratings.com, mm -hmm. so you can look it up uh, anywhere. But it's all also on all the advertising. It's on posters, radio announcements, whatever. The descriptors are so important to us because they're, they're our best way of communicating what elements in the film are at that level. And trust me, parents care about different things. And somebody perhaps would take a, a um, teen to an R for language, mm -hmm. not particularly th caring about the language, but they wouldn't to an R for strong violence throughout, graphic nudity, whatever. So, so it's through that descriptor a parent knows what's to be on the watch for. Yeah, yeah first comes the rating level, which is the level of content. Mm -hmm. And then comes the descriptor. What are some of the descriptors? I, I mean, I think people well, know, but just. Well, it can say PG-13 for brief nudity. Mm -hmm. uh, our board thinking that the nudity in the film was at a PG-13 level, but we want to put the brief in there so they know it's just a moment. Uh, so we try, you know, we only have mm -hmm. a sentence to do it. So right. it has to be kind of a spotlight on the important elements. The, the feedback loop with the studios, with the filmmakers, with the creatives, how does that work? You, yeah. you, that, that's an interesting part mm -hmm. of our whole process because when a film is submitted to us, there is an authorized contact for the rating information. And we don't talk to anybody that's not on that authorized contact line. And for instance, if a director called me a morning after we'd seen the film and said, I hear you gave an R to my film, right. uh, what, uh, what can I do to get it a 13? I would not, I would say, and I'd have to go to the authorized signer and say, do you want me talking to the director? And the authorized center, is that generally a studio executive? It, yes, it's usually with the studios. Mm -hmm. It's uh, somebody in post-production that remains the same, and they're very familiar with the uh. way we work, the way they work. Um, and, but sometimes, you know, um, over 75% of our business is from independent filmmakers. Sure. And so they have, they have a variety of people handling it for them, whether they do it themselves for their individual film or whether they mm -hmm. go to one person who um, acts a, as a consultant and submits it. But you're also talking to parents. Parents. Well, yes. We, we parents hear, reach out to you. We hear from parents a lot. 
uh, and do surveys to find mm -hmm. out um, if we're tracking correctly because our our purpose is to rate the film the way a majority of American parents would rate the film. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very uh, alert to what we think a majority thinks. Right. So uh, we do get calls from all over the country about different matters. And um, when somebody calls, and let's, let's say it's a complaint, because it, right. if somebody calls, it usually is a complaint. Uh, and uh, I always ask them how old their children are, mm -hmm. if in fact they've seen the film, because sometimes it happens that they haven't, they've just read a review and sure. they, they, they hear it has an issue in it and they say how can it be PG if that issue's in the film. And I, and I ask what part of the country they're from. Mm -hmm. You're obviously looking at final products, right, final films. Are you looking at work in progress, at scripts, at storyboards, at rough cuts? Well, because of the because of the computer graphics that have developed over mm -hmm. the past couple decades, some of those are not finished till the very last minute, and mm -hmm. some of those cost so much money that um, some filmmakers don't want to invest in the money if it's going to cause a higher rating than they want to deliver. So this is very For CGI. getting very sure, okay. conv convoluted. So sometimes we have looked at films before certain effects are finished to get an all-over impression of, of what our gut reaction is to the mm -hmm. rating. It's never final and we always have to see the finished product, but we have been known to look at films before they're finished. Mm -hmm.